Mother, is Maxwell House really the only coffee in the world? Well, your father says so, and your father knows best. <laughs> Yes, it's Father Knows Best, transcribed in Hollywood, starring Robert Young as Father. A half-hour visit with your neighbors, the Andersons, brought to you by America's favorite coffee, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. When it comes to retribution... We all know dozens of interesting proverbs, don't we? I mean things like, as ye sow, so shall ye reap, or he that diggeth a pit shall fall into it, things like that. Well, in Springfield, in a certain white frame house on Maple Street, Father is about to make a bed. Not a real bed, of course, but knowing Jim Anderson as we do, the chances are six, two, and even that if he makes a bed, he'll wind up sleeping in it, like this. Never mind, Kathy. You can go to the circus some other time. But Daddy said... Just a minute, kitten. The child's absolutely right, Margaret. We promised her a trip to the circus as part of her birthday present. And Ed Davis had no right to go back on our word. What was that again? Never mind. You just eat your breakfast. But how could Mr. Davis... Eat your breakfast, Betty, and don't bother about things that don't concern you. Jumping creepers. When a man says he's going to take somebody to the circus, he ought to take them. He has to go to the doctor's, Jim. I told you that last night. Honey, when you make a promise to a child... But he didn't make the promise. You did. That's not the point. <laughs> he said he was going to take Patty anyway, and I wouldn't have given my word to Kathy in the first place if he hadn't said... Well, why can't he go to the doctor some other time? Why don't you take her? Stop changing the subject. If a man says... Jim, that's a very good idea. Why don't you? Why don't I what? Take Kathy to the circus. Margaret, let's not be ridiculous. I don't think it's ridiculous at all. I'm nine years old, and in my whole life, I've never even been to the circus except four or five times. <laughs> Honey, you know how busy I'm going to be this afternoon. Why, well, I've got to... I've got all kinds of things to do. Important things. You don't want to take me to the circus. Yes, I do, kitten. Really, I do, but... Margaret... Why don't you take her? You'd have fun. Ethel Davis and I have a very important Red Cross meeting. You know that. We've been planning on it for weeks. Well, I certainly think... Betty, you haven't been to a circus in years. Me? Why, Father... You'd have a wonderful time. Why, this is the greatest circus they've ever had in Springfield. Three rings and hundreds of aerialists and elephants and lions and tigers. <laughs> Jim, you know she's allergic to animals. <laughs> She sneezes. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever heard. It's all in her mind, and you know it. It isn't, Father. I am allergic. <laughs> well, why sneeze now? There isn't an animal within two blocks of this place. <laughs> I sneeze when I just think of it. <laughs> now, see here, Betty. Dear, you're getting her all upset. I'm not getting her upset, but every time she has to do something... Bud! Bud! <laughs> Morning, everybody. How's every little old thing? Morning, Hi, Bud. Bud. Bud, how would you like to go to the circus? The circus? Hey, when are we going? You can take Kathy this afternoon. Oh, boy, when I... <laughs> Kathy. <laughs> You'll have a wonderful time. The clowns and the acrobats and the... whatever they have. You mean just the two of us? That's right, just you and Kathy Sitting there watching the tumblers tumbling And the acrobats acrobatting Dad, please, if you only knew Hey, I can't go You not only can go, but you're going But I can't, I've got a meeting All the student managers have a football meeting this afternoon But somebody's got to take Kathy to the circus But the football season starts in two weeks And if I'm not at the just meeting Just a minute, Bud Jim Honey, there's nothing vital about a high school football meeting as long as I promise Kathy... You're going to take her. Exactly. And if I weren't so busy myself... <laughs> now, look, Margaret... It's all settled here. You made a promise, and you're going to keep it, aren't you? Margaret, this is the first Saturday in three weeks. It hasn't rained, and... And you can play golf next week, can't you, dear? Yes, I guess I can. There. Now, that's all decided, and we can get back to our breakfast. Go ahead, Kathy, drink your milk. I'm 
I'm going to the circus. I'm going to the circus. Oh, pass the cream and sugar. <laughs> Please. The sugar. Bob, did you take the sugar over to Mrs. Phillips last night? What sugar? I asked your father to buy 10 pounds of sugar. Well, I did, and I... Uh, it's in the back of the car. Oh, that's going to do Helen Phillips a lot of good. Bud... I'll get it, Margaret. Let the boy eat his breakfast. Thanks, Dad. He'll need his strength for that football meeting this afternoon. Jim, there's no point in being bitter. I'm not being bitter, but it's a fine thing when I'm the only one in the whole family with courage enough to take Kathy to the circus. Bring the sugar in here, dear. I want to see Helen anyway. Okay. Fine bunch of kids I've got. Think of a million things to do whenever anything like this comes up. And that Ed Davis. Wait till I see that guy. Hey, Jim. Well, speak of the devil. If it isn't my friend, Ed Davis. Jim, wait till you hear what I've got fixed up for us this afternoon. I've already heard, thank you. You don't know the half of it, Jim. We're going to make a fortune. Oh, what did you do? Fix it so the elephants give me peanuts? <laughs> what? My pal, my old friend, Ed Davis. What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. But if you don't want to get hit over the head with 10 pounds of sugar, just stand back a little. Well, that's a fine way to talk to a man who just dug up the two greatest pigeons in the history of golf. Fine, I'll tell him when he comes in. What's the trouble, Jim? Don't you feel well? I feel great. I feel so great that I've canceled my golf game and I'm going to take Kathy to the circus. Oh, no, not today, pal. You can't. I can't, huh? But I need you. Well, why didn't you think of that before you... Hey, wait a minute. I thought you were going to the doctor's this afternoon. Oh, I had to get loose some way, didn't I? You mean this whole thing about the doctor? You never had it. A... Why, you... Now, wait a second, Jim. I've got these two guys lined up, and if we can't take them for 20 bucks apiece, then my name isn't Ed Davis. As far as I'm concerned, it's Benedict Arnold. <laughs> Gosh, I'd never dreamed you'd have to go. I mean, I, I figured... Well, why can't Betty take her or Bud? Because Betty's allergic to animals. And Bud has a football meeting, and I hope you take six putts on every green. Now, look, let's not get excited, pal. We'll figure something out. Oh, sure, you're great at figuring things out. You're a real humdinger. You know, if there were anything wrong with you, Betty or Bud would have to take her, wouldn't they? There isn't anything wrong with me. Besides, they won't go for that doctor thing twice. Well, maybe if you had a toothache. Ed, I feel bad enough the way I am. That's it? You've got a toothache? I haven't got a toothache, and what's more, I don't want one. Jim, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You go inside and tell Margaret you've got an awful toothache. What for? Then I call you on the phone, make an appointment for this afternoon, and we're in. You're in the real estate business. Since when do you fix teeth? <laughs> we pretend I'm Doc Walters. It's a natural, Jim. It can't miss. Ed, didn't your father ever explain to you about truth and honesty and how telling lies can get you into all kinds of trouble? Sure. What do you say, pal? <laughs> Will it work? Well, it can't miss. <laughs> well, you put on a big toothache act and then tell Margaret you're expecting a call from Doc Walters about an appointment. Ed, isn't that kind of sneaky? Of course it's kind of sneaky. Are we going to do it? Okay. <laughs> Give me time to get the thing started. You bet, pal. See you later. I don't know. The things you have to do to play a few measly holes of golf. He's the worst liar in Springfield. I'm just as bad. Did you find it, Jim? Oh, sure. It was right in the back seat. I told you. Oh! oh. Something oh. wrong, Father? No, I just had a little... Oh. What is it, Jim? You sound like you're dying. Oh, it's his tooth. All of a sudden, I got this sharp... Oh! Hurts, huh, Dad? <laughs> <laughs> Of course not. I'm just practicing for when it does hurt. <laughs> How come you have to practice a thing like that? Oh. You'll not get any sympathy from me, Jim Anderson. I've been telling you for months to see Dr. Walters about that, too. I tried to make an appointment yesterday, but he's a busy guy. As a matter of fact, uh, he's going to call me if he can squeeze me in this afternoon. Why didn't you tell us that before? Oh, I uh, guess I forgot. Until my tooth started to hurt again. But uh, he promised to call me if he can squeeze me in this afternoon. Well, 
Uh, I'd better run over to Helen's with the sugar. I said he's going to call me if he can squeeze me in this afternoon. I know. You've said it three times. When you're all finished, Betty, stack the dishes and we'll do them later. Okay. I'll only be gone a minute or two. Margaret, what if Dr. Wallace calls while you're... Margaret! She didn't hear you, Dad. Oh, fine. I go to all that trouble and... All right, Kathy, now what's the matter? Who's going to take me to the circus now? Well, Bud, you know I wouldn't ask you to do something I wouldn't do myself, don't you? Do I? <laughs> of course you do. Naturally, if the dentist can't take me, I'll be glad to go with Kathy. But if I can't, well... Then I'm stuck. You won't be stuck at all. Why, I'll give you an extra $5 for ice cream and stuff. Five dollars? You know, maybe it is in my mind. The sneezing, I mean. Oh, no, you don't. He said I was gonna go. <laughs> Father, I'm much older than Bud, and I'll be able to look after Kathy much better, won't I, Kathy? Well... Wait a minute, Kathy. Who took care of you when you fell down and skinned your knee? Well... It's an established fact that girls take better care of girls than any other kind of people. Who said Kathy... <laughs> <laughs> Who said Kathy was a girl? <laughs> I am too a girl. Now, just a second. We can settle this very amicably. You can all go. Oh, boy! Do we each get five dollars? No. You and Bud can share it between you. Holy cow. Well, it's better than nothing. What do I get? You get to go to the circus. Oh, that's right. Well, that must be Doc... I mean, I better see who it is. I'll answer it, Dad. You stay where you are. Father, you shouldn't run around like that with a toothache. I'll be all right. I hope. Hello? Oh, hello, Dr. Wallers. I've been hoping you'd call Dr. Wallers. Uh, just a second, Dr. Wallers. Say, kids, it's Dr. Wallers. No kidding. <laughs> hello? Well, that's fine, Doctor. You can squeeze me in after all, eh, Doctor? Wonderful. Okay, Dr. Wallers, I'll be there at 2 o'clock. Okay. On the first... I mean... Your office at 2 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. Goodbye. Did you hear that, kids? You'll be able to take me at 2 o'clock. Father, why don't you lie down in the meantime? We'll get you an ice pack and some aspirin. Oh, and... I'm all right, Betty. After all, it's just a little toothache. and Well, we don't let little things like that get us down, do we? I think Mom's back. Mommy, we're all going to the circus. Betty and Bud and me. And I. I said you first. <laughs> well, you seem like a happy little group. Honey, Doc Waller just called and... He did. He certainly did, didn't he, kids? He That's sure right, Mother. Well, how strange. I don't see anything strange about it. I told you he was going to call, didn't I? I know, but... You see, Helen Phillips had an appointment with him at 3 o'clock, and she decided to have her hair done instead, so I called Dr. Walters from her house. Margaret, and... you didn't. Yes, dear. You have an appointment with Dr. Walters at 3. Oh, no. <laughs> so Mother went ahead and called Dr. Walters herself. <laughs> Poor Father. But then he should know by now, life's like that, just full of surprises. Take yourself, for example. You're in for a most pleasant surprise. First time you pour yourself a fragrant, truly good cup of our Maxwell House coffee. Yes, ma'am, you've probably tried a number of different brands that didn't quite make the grade. But one sip of Maxwell House and you know, you'll know this is coffee as coffee should taste. And the point is, no other coffee, no coffee but Maxwell House, has that wonderfully good to the last drop flavor. And here's why. You see, throughout the world, there are countless varieties and grades of coffee beans. But some are far superior to others. And only the extra flavor varieties are good enough for the treasured Maxwell House blend. From the mile-high plateaus of Latin America, the Maxwell House people select fancy Manizales coffees for fragrant mellowness, superb medellins for extra richness, choice Bucaramangas coffees for fine, full body. Then these luxury coffees are blended together in just the right proportions to create that one and only good-to-the-last-drop flavor. In a word, 
no other coffee tastes like Maxwell House because no other coffee is made like Maxwell House. That's why Maxwell House is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand at any price. This weekend, then, start enjoying the coffee with the world's most famous flavor, Maxwell House, the coffee that's always good to the last drop. Remember what we said in the beginning? I mean about reaping what you sow and falling into pits and things. It sure worked out that way, didn't it? Jim Anderson made a bed, poor fellow. And from the way it looks, someone's been eating crackers in it. In other words, father is in a mess. But then he usually is, isn't he? Honey, there isn't any point going to the dentist if my tooth stopped hurting, is there? Jim, the laundry man will be here any minute, and if we don't get these things sorted... But I'm trying to tell you, my tooth doesn't hurt anymore. Do the small towels go, Mother? Uh, no, dear. Put them over here. Isn't it getting to be time to go to the circus? Stop worrying about it, will you? We've got over an hour. I don't mind going to the dentist or anything like that. I know, dear. But what's the use? I won't even be able to tell him which tooth it is. Well, can he sort of poke around and find out for himself? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody asked you, so sort the socks and keep still. Holy cow. Jim, you've been complaining about that tooth for over a year, and I certainly think Well, what's that... the sense of having it fixed when it doesn't hurt? Maybe it fixed itself. Teeth do not fix themselves. Well, maybe mine are different. <laughs> Grandma Williams' teeth are. She sends them to the dentist while she goes to the movie. <laughs> Besides, I really promised Kathy that I'd take her to the circus. Didn't I, kitten? I don't think so. You just said I could go. You know, I'll bet Doc Wallers can call up ten dozen people who really need appointments this afternoon. Darling, it won't do you the least bit of good. You're going to see Dr. Walters at three o'clock if I have to drag you down there. Honey, it's not that I'm afraid to go to the dentist. Mm, of course not. But my tooth doesn't hurt. It feels wonderful. Well, that makes me very happy, dear. But I think this bundle's ready to be tied. So is father. Betty. <laughs> It's a fine thing when a bunch of children can sit around and make fun of their father. I didn't say anything. Me either. And I'm not sitting around. I mean, I wasn't making fun of you, Father. Look, let's put it another way. I've, well, I've been worried. About what, dear? About the children going to the circus alone. We did it last year. I know, but you were younger then. <laughs> Jim. I mean it, Margaret. What if something happens? What uh, if they get lost? We won't get lost, Father. Why don't you sort the laundry? Jumping creepers. After all, Kathy's practically a baby. I am not. People are always stealing babies. Who'd want to steal Kathy? <laughs> but if they did, we'd get a fortune for taking her back. <laughs> Betty, please. I think they're both very mean. And just for that, when we go to the circus, I hope I do get lost. There you are. She wants to get lost. How can you expect two children like Betty and Bud to cope with a situation like that? She won't get lost. But how can you be sure? We've got handcuffs. <laughs> what if Betty starts to sneeze? What then? I won't sneeze, Father. But what if you do? Well, I'll... She can blow her nose. <laughs> there you are, dear. It's very simple. I think I'd better go along, just to play safe. You'll go to the dentist. But, honey... Mother will take you to the circus some other time. <laughs> now, look, Margaret. Bud, how can there be 12 and a half pairs of socks? Bud, that was the door. It was Kathy's door. But you're standing right there. Well, it's a matter of principle, Dad. That was the back door, and I'm supposed to answer the front... Answer the door. <laughs> Holy cow. Now I have to answer both doors. Daddy! Make such a big fuss about a simple thing like answering a door. You expect him to take care of a small child at the circus? Daddy! What is it, kitten? I went to the dentist, and he didn't hurt me very much. Kathy, I'm not afraid to go to the dentist. Hiya, Jim. Oh, hello, Ed. Come on in. Well, you're a busy little bunch, aren't you? Hello, Margaret. Hello, girls. Ed. Hello, Davis. Mr. Davis. Dad, I don't mind opening the back door, but Kathy and I tossed for it. We'll and... take it up later. But you always stick up for her, and why should I answer both? Bud. Doors. 
I don't know. Do you have arguments like this at your house, Ed? Yeah, we manage. Say, Jim, I'm driving right past Doc Walters, and I'll be glad to drop you off. Well, thanks, Ed, but... How uh... did you know Jim was going to the dentist? Uh... How? Yes, how? You haven't talked to him since he made the appointment. Uh, that's right. I, I haven't, have I? I, uh, I told Ed about it yesterday, honey. Didn't I, Ed? Uh, yes. Yes, he told me about it yesterday. That's how I, uh, knew. Jim, are you and Ed... Excuse me, honey. I want to show Ed something out in the garage. I'll see you later, Margaret. If it's an old skeleton, be sure to put it back. Yes, dear, I'll do that. So long, everybody. Goodbye, Ed. Goodbye, Bye, Mr. Davis. Davis. Do we have a skeleton in the garage? Mm. Never mind, Angel. My, but you're a bright character, aren't you? Well, I didn't see any point in taking both cars, and you don't think she suspects anything, do you? Oh, of course not. How could she? Well, uh, you and your brilliant ideas... Do you know I've got to be at the dentist at 3 o'clock? You do? Yes, I do. I made an appointment. Well, why'd you do a silly thing like that? Now, look, Ed. You weren't supposed to make a real appointment. I... Ed, why don't you go play golf? What about you? If I'm lucky, I'll go to the circus. If I'm not... Yeah? That drill. <laughs> I get weak just thinking about it. Gosh, Jim, I had no idea. It's bad enough when the tooth hurts, but to sit there with a practically good tooth. Well, uh, guess I better be going. Yes, you do that. I'll uh, see you later, Jim. Sure, have a wonderful time, Ed. Thanks, pal. And don't break more than one leg. <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course, you can break it in two or three places. Mother, Janie Liggett's on the phone. For me? And is it all right if I don't go to the circus this afternoon? Of course it's all right. And uh, why don't you take Bud with you? Father, really? Well, I was just hoping. Jim, I explained to Betty that she'd given her word to Kathy. But Father said I could go. Betty, I'll feel a lot easier if you and Bud are taking care of Kathy. But, Mother... I'll be there, honey, so why worry? After all, I'm certainly capable you of... You are going to the dentist. But, Margaret... I can take care of Kathy alone, Mom. Honest, I can. We'll take very good care of her, won't we, Bud? Sure. Jim, for the last time... Can I please go with Janie, Mother? Please? Oh, I don't know what to say. Between you and your father... Why don't you let her go, honey, as long as it's that important? Well, all right. Oh, thank you, Mother. Creepers, wait till I tell Janie. Hot dog. What are you so happy about? Now I get the whole five bucks. <laughs> Margaret, he's going to eat himself sick at that circus. No, I won't, Dad. You heard what he said. He's going to gorge himself with $5 worth of junk. He won't have $5, Daddy. He promised to buy me a bag of peanuts. Well, that's mighty generous of him. <laughs> you sure you can spare it, bud? Oh, sure. They're only a dime. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret, the more I think of it, the less I like it. Going to the dentist, you mean? Oh, no. I mean... Well, Bud worked so hard to become a student manager of the football team, and if he has to miss that meeting this afternoon... What meeting? You said there was an important football meeting of all the student managers. I did? Oh, oh I, I guess I made a mistake. It's Monday. I see. But I'll have the car. And we certainly can't have them riding their bicycles through all the traffic, can we? We're going to take the bus. The bus. Uh... Think hard, dear. <laughs> what? You must have another three or four frantic reasons. Why, Margaret, the way you talk, anyone would think... Hmm, they certainly would, wouldn't they? Well, it's a fine thing when a grown man can't make up his own mind when he wants to go to the dentist. I mean, the circus. I know, dear. Isn't it awful? Look, honey, the circus is only going to be here. Hey, Bud! Hiya, Joe! Bud, I was talking to your mother. But that's Joe Phillips. I wouldn't care if it was Joe McAcropolis. <laughs> Who's Joe McAcropolis? <laughs> How do I know? 
Oh. Come on in, Joe. Okay. Say, the Chicago Bears are playing an exhibition game in Plainville this afternoon. They are? Yes, sir. It happened very suddenly. They had a cancellation and... Well... Anyway, how would it be if you and Joe... Jim, don't you dare. Put Mom, the Chicago Bear. Honey... Kathy is going to the circus with Bud, and you are going to the dentist. Well... Hey, Bud, I just found out... Oh, excuse me. Hello, Mrs. Anderson. Hello, Joe. Hello, Mr. Anderson. Joe, I was just telling Bud... Hey, excuse me, Mr. Anderson, but this is awful important. Well, it can't be that important. Oh, but it is, Mr. Anderson. I just found out... You know what I just found out? What? The Chicago Bears are playing in Plainville. What do you think of that? It's fine. Jim, you're not being fair. What's the important news, Joe? Oh, it... It is important. Well, of course it is. Oh, stop being so sensitive, Joe. What is it? The Chicago Bears are playing in Plainville. <laughs> That's what I just said. I know. <laughs> I was just telling Bud I'd be glad to buy you boys a couple of tickets, but... Uh... Jim Anderson, if you knew what I was thinking right now... Uh, Margaret, whatever do you mean? Holy cow, You Mom. might as well forget it, Bud. Your father's going to the dentist. But, Mom... Oh, you... that's another thing I guess I forgot. You forgot what? My mother said to tell you she couldn't get an appointment to have her hair done, so she's going to the dentist after all. Oh, no. The most for your money. Isn't that what you look for when you go shopping, ma'am? And with coffee, the most in value means the most in flavor. Now, there is one coffee that's world famous for flavor, our Maxwell House coffee. Bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand at any price. That's why I say serve our Maxwell House coffee to your family. You'll see. There's a richly satisfying flavor. A taste of contentment in every cup that'll make your family say, best coffee ever. Then just count all the truly good cups you get from each pound. You'll agree that Maxwell House is today's coffee buy. At your grocer's tomorrow or Saturday, then, for the most in value, the most in flavor, look for the sign of good coffee, the big white cup and drop on our familiar blue tin of Maxwell House. Serve your family the one coffee that's always good to the last drop. It's evening now, and all is well with the Andersons. Well, most of the Andersons, anyway. There's Betty. Oh, Mother, you've never seen anything as wonderful as Richard. He's got the curliest hair and the bluest eyes. But, boy, what a team. Rock, sock, slam, bang. It's the greatest football team I ever saw. Why, there's one guy. Kathy. Oh, Mommy, it was the most wonderful circus in the whole world. All the elephants and the lions and the clowns and the tigers. And, of course, Father. Oh, wow. What's the matter with Father? He'll be all right, dear. I'll bet I know. He ate too much at the circus. He didn't either. He's got a toothache. Join us again next week when we'll be back with Father Knows Best, starring Robert Young as Jim Anderson, with Roy Bargey and the Maxwell House Orchestra. In our cast were Rhoda Williams as Betty, Dorothy Lovett, Ted Donaldson, Norma Jean Nilsson, Barney Phillips, Gil Stratton Jr., and yours truly, Bill Foreman. So until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's favorite brand of coffee, always good to the last drop. Father Knows Best was transcribed in Hollywood and written by Ed James. Join Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, tonight on NBC.